Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Lab. So, if you remember, we created a few months back uh, the latest 2021 Java collection series. And uh, this series was like very popular and a lot of people, they got the advantage of the series. Where I have covered most of the scenarios and most of the use cases and all the collection topics in Java that I have covered. And there are some really good examples like how exactly hash map works internally, hash set, concurrent hash map, linked hash map. And there are so many examples I have covered uh, with respect to Java collections. But one topic we missed that is the priority queue. How exactly the priority queue works? So I'll give you one basic, first of all, hierarchy based diagram that uh, this is your priority uh, queue. Okay. So this is the basic hierarchy. So this is interface. This is also interface. This is also interface. This is class and this is class. So priority queue is actually extending abstract queue and this is implementing queue interface and so on like that. So this is if someone is asking you about the class hierarchy of the Java priority queue, this is example. Now, what do you mean by priority queue? So priority queue is first of all, a spatial collection, I would say, having the natural ascending order, right? So whenever you insert data inside the uh, queue, it always follow first in first out, but in the a natural ascending order or you can create your own custom comparator at the time of uh, creation of the priority queue and you can define it over there so let's see how exactly it works but before that let's take one more example for example let's see i want to add uh, uh, some elements in my priority queue let's see i'm adding 750 then i'm adding a uh, 500 then i'm adding a uh, 900 and then i'm adding 100 right so how exactly the priority queue will be maintained so the structure of the priority queue will be like this. So this is, I have to insert operation. It means this is my insert operation, or you can say add to the priority queue. And then whenever you have to remove the element that is called removing the values or polling the values. So this is also called, can I say DQ, whatever it is. And this is NQ. So how exactly if I enter 750, 500, 900 and 100, so it will look like the greatest element, which is 900 will be added first like this. And then 750 will be added. And then the next element is 500 will be added. And the least element is the 100 will be added over here. So I would say this is my a greatest element and this is my least element, right? So this is called the rear and this is called front of this particular queue. Right, so this is a natural ascending order. It will always maintain. You can see natural ascending order in the ascending order 900, 750, 500, and then 100. So when I poll, so which element will be taken first? The least element will be taken first from the queue. So 100 will be taken first, right? Like this. So this is a basic property of a priority queue, but you can create your own custom comparator also. You can define this custom comparator. You can pass this custom comparator to the priority queue object and say that, okay, you can customize your uh, polling mechanism accordingly. For example, let's see, I want to get the highest salary employee from this particular priority queue or lowest employee salary that I want to capture. For example, I want to capture that having the least or lowest string length element, a particular list of from a given particular queue that I want to capture that. So such kind of uh, a mechanism, you can see that, okay, you can implement with the help of priority queue. There are many examples, let's see, whenever you are defining your heap, so you know, heap is also a kind of based out of priority queue. There are some processes that you want to kill, let's say you want to kill or you want to implement those processes in your operating system, which are having the highest priority and then the lowest priority. So whenever you have to custom you have to customize your priority. In that case, I have to use the priority queue. That's why the name itself is a priority queue. You can define the queue on the basis of some custom comparator. You can customize your priority over there. So let's take a basic example first, and then we will see a couple of really good example, a very, very important interview question. So this is the uh, project that I have already created. We were using the same project here. In this particular package, I'm going to create a class, select the main method and click on finish. And then this priority queue, I'm going to create the object of the priority queue first here, priority queue here like this. Right now I'm not giving any generics. I'm writing, okay, PR is equal to a new priority queue. Perfect. And let's see, I want to add some integer value so you can pass some integer. And now if you start adding these values, right? And it will may always maintain the ascending order, 
right so let's see i want to system dot out print ln first of all i really want to capture the size of this priority queue so there is a method priority dot size and when you run this the size is equal to four over here because this is absolutely fine the size equal to four okay now i want to fetch a value so to fetch a value what you can do is that you can simply write pr dot poll right so according to pr poll means according to the diagram the pr poll means the least the the front one this is called head of the priority queue will be removed first and at the head which value will be stored it means the least value will be stored first because it always maintain the ascending order so let's see pr dot poll should give you what it should give you 100 over here which is absolutely working fine for example let's see i'm adding one more value over here and the least value is now 50 so let's see what exactly it is giving so let's run it again and let's see the 50 is the head front of this particular priority queue so that's why we are getting a 50 over here like this right so 50 will be added at the end although we are adding the first at 11 line so this is what the priority queue that you can use it you can use it for the strings also you can use it for the java collections you can for, uh, you can use it for the java objects also you can do that okay now i'll do one thing let me create another class priority queue with java objects and select the main method click on finish my target is that I have to create a priority queue in which I have to add, I have to keep adding number of uh, employee objects or any user objects and then I have to find out that okay which employee is having the least salary. That's a very famous interview question. So what exactly I'm going to do that okay fine that I'm going to maintain first a class over here that is an employee class, employee class like that. And then I'm having the every employee is having its name and every employee is having its uh, salary like this okay and then i'm going to create one constructor over here so now i'm going to override the two string method first generate a two string method include everything perfect so it will print it like that simple okay great now what exactly i'm going to do that i'm going to create the priority queue object in such a way like this so priority queue and this time the generics will be it should hold all the employee objects over here and in this particular PR, I'm going to add, see this method, all the employees. For example, let's see, I'm going to add employee and then I'm passing the employee name. For example, employee name is A and the salary is, let's see, 300, something like this. So I'm going to add some more employees and uh, let's see, employee, this employee salary is only 50, this employee salary is only 10, this employee salary is 3,500 and then we have employee salary, which is uh, uh, 50,000 like that okay so this is a priority queue that I have added over here after that let's see how exactly it will maintain the insertion order in the ascending order or not so I'll simply write system dot order print ln and see this carefully at the moment I write pr dot a poll over here what exactly it will return let's see a java application and it's saying class cast exception over here it's saying the employee cannot be cast to the comparables it means you have to define a comparator over here like this so you cannot pull it directly because the generics are an object a java object it's not any primitive data type like this so in this case what exactly i'm going to do that i'm going to define my own comparator okay so i'm going to create another class comparator so let's see this is my employee comparator which is actually implementing object here i mean interface here and here i'm going to pass employee here right and then it's saying that okay you have to override one method implement one method for the comparator which is compare and uh, let's see taking two uh, comparisons objects employee e1 and employee uh, e2 and then i'm returning that e1 dot salary minus e1 dot salary minus e2 dot salary and then you return the same thing it means you keep comparing uh, two values together whenever i'm trying to fetch the value from this particular queue and then you have to keep giving the values on the basis of that okay but here what exactly again if you run this program see i'm running it again i'm not i have just defined this particular comparator over here but i'm not using this comparator in my priority queue it means it really doesn't matter if you have defined it but if you're not using it again it will give you the same exception over here so what you have to do is that when you write create the object of priority queue say i'll show you the priority queue object once again there is one object that you can define the capacity also you can create your own comparator here as well see this is the initial capacity and the comparator also you can write it initial capacity let's see i want 10 different segments initially and what is your comparator name so here you have to create the object of comparator first here 
So let me create the comparator object. Let's see comp is equal to a new comparator object that I have created. And then we have to add this particular comparator here, right? And then I'm going to fetch it once again. And let's see this time what exactly it is giving. So this time it is giving the employee name equal to E, the lowest salary equal to 10 over here, which is absolutely the right output that we are getting it. So such kind of problems you can easily solve with the priority queue here, right? Like this. Now, for example, see 10 I have added for employee E after A, B, C, D, but this is the lowest employee salary that I'm getting along with the employee name and the salary. Now I'll do one thing. I'll just change E2 dot salary minus E1 dot salary. It means give me the highest salary person, highest salary employee. When you run it and let's see what exactly I'm getting. Now this time I'm getting the employee name is equal to G. The salary is $50,000 or something like this that we are getting it. So that is what the priority queue you can easily implement with the custom comparator also. In the previous example, we have not implemented any custom comparator. This is a default constructor that we are passing, passing some certain integer value. So it will always maintain one default ascending order while adding the values inside the priority queue. So this is what the custom priority you can define and you can easily show it like this. Perfect. So poll method is uh, there, which will always fetch the value from the priority queue. And now I'll do one thing after polling. See this carefully. One more example. You directly print this particular PR and then let's see what exactly happens. So when you run this PR and here you are getting, see this, you are getting that uh, name C, B, then F, then D and A. So here, if you see that uh, the employee G is not visible here, see this, there is no, there is no employee G. Why? Because I have used poll. Poll means fetch the value, remove the value from this particular priority queue. So that's why we have already polled at line number 45. Poll means just remove it. This is just white like that. Poll means just remove this particular 100 from here. Now the front is pointing to this guy. Like this, right? So poll is nothing like it will just poll and then the value will remain same. No, it will just remove the value from that particular queue also. Remember this thing, right? Now, there is one more example. For example, let's see, I have... Uh, not added anything size will be zero and when you poll it when you poll it it's giving you null over here so this is the property of the poll but there is one more method if you write system dot out print ln pr dot remove method use remove remove is also removing the values from that particular priority but remove method we don't have anything so what exactly will remove so in that case the remove will give you a no such element exception over here like this so that is the basic difference between poll and remove so better to use a poll poll means remove doesn't matter value is available or not and always remove the latest value and the latest value will be like, added on the basis of the comparator that you have defined in this example. I'm giving you an assignment. It's a very famous interview question. So let me create a class and then I'm going to write the priority queue. Select the main method and click on finish. So now it will be simple. What exactly? First of all that uh, I need to create a comparator. So, and then I'm going to define one comparator over here like this. So I just copy paste the things over here and then I'm going to create one comparator and uh, see this, remove it from here, s2 dot a length minus s1 dot length. Okay. But yeah, s1 dot length minus s2 dot length. Okay. And instead of uh, employee comparator, I simply write a nice name, my comparator here like this. Okay. And uh, here we have to write a string here, which will hold some strings, both the sides. And this is the comparator that we are using it. And the same my comparator, I'm using it over here as well. And uh, and uh, we instead of employee, we have to write the string type of objects here. Now it's absolutely working fine. Now in this particular PR, I'm going to add some more strings here. So I'll be writing add. And then you can add some strings. For example, let's see, I'm adding a Naveen. And then I'm going to poll it. Let's see which value I'm getting poll. So PR dot a poll. So ideally it should give you the least length of that particular string from the priority queue. So let's see, it's giving you N, which is absolutely working fine, right? Then I, if I reverse the S2 dot length minus S1 dot length, in that case, it should start giving you the highest length over here that is Naveen automation from the given uh, strings, right? So this is a very simple interview question and uh, just create your own comparator and supply the comparator to the priority queue constructor 
and just get the values and define your own priority accordingly on the basis of the custom comparator like that so that was the two important interview question that i have covered so please use this use it smartly and someone is asking this question please solve it properly at time of interview it will help you a lot and you can easily use in different use cases in your uh, system design or in your uh, uh, automation and in your framework as well so that's all for this particular video i hope you liked it please subscribe to the channel if you are liking these videos and please please go through this entire collection series it will help you a lot to understand the entire uh, collections concept here thank you so much guys thanks for watching navin automation labs i'll see you in the next video till then take care and god bless you all